Olá, para você que acabou de sintonizar a TV Ideal, eu sou o Carlos Mello e este é o Siga o Mestre, hoje conversando com a professora da Universidade de Chicago, Susan Anúncio. No segundo bloco, ela contou para a gente, ela começou a contar uma historinha de um executivo que conseguiu ter 21 trimestres de sucesso e lucro seguidos. Eu vou perguntar para ela agora como isso é possível. Susan, what is the Mendonça story? How is it possible to have 21 successful quarters of profitable, sustained growth? I asked him that question, and this is what he said. He said, at our company, we hire the smartest people we can. Are you talking in the U.S.? This, yes, this it's happened? in the U.S. Okay. And he said, but we, if, when they first start working, we say to them, in the next six months, we want you to figure out three ways, three new ways you can make impact on our business. And he, he looked at me and he said, we already know how to do things the way we're doing it. We bring new people in this company to tell us how we can do it better. What? Be different? Yes, be different. Change things. Mm -hmm. Grow. He also said to me, at our company, if somebody makes a mistake, we're not interested in who made it. What we want to know is, why did the mistake happen? What can we learn from it? And how can we turn it around to a way to have an opportunity for success? May I challenge you more? Sure, please. I remember you telling me a story about a telecom company yes. and a business executive had been hired uh, to revert the results. Yes. And by using the high performance techniques, he was able to do that. Yes, it's a uh, very What's the story? It's a very simple story, but yet profound. He was hired to run the lowest performing business unit in a big global company. Within 18 months it went from the lowest performing to the highest performing. I said to him, how did you do this? He said, when I got there, I thought they wanted to fire me, and they gave me this. <laughs> and he said, so I brought a, about 50 people in a room, and I asked them a simple question. I asked them what was wrong, and they told me. And he said, I took out a big whiteboard, and I wrote down all the problems. And then one by one, I asked the people in the room, how do you fix them? And they told me. And he said to me, and I then said to them, Okay, if we fix all these problems, can we make our numbers? They said, absolutely. He said, what if we want to beat our numbers? What do we have to do? Again, he said, and they told me. It's a very simple story, but very profound. The, the moral to the story is the people who work for you know how to solve your problems, but most of us don't ask. I haven't met the company, and I've been a consultant for over 25 years, whose own people don't know how to fix it. But they're afraid to tell their boss because they're afraid that if they say anything wrong, anything negative, they're going to get fired. You said because people don't ask questions, yes. but we are educated to ask questions, yes. especially when we are at uh, home. Yes. Well, what we found in high-performance groups, one of the differences when we observed high-performing groups versus non-performing groups is that in high-performing groups, they actually ask more questions. And the question they ask most frequently is why. So you, I'm talking to you, Carlos, and you come up with a really strange idea. And I'm listening to it, and my ears are going, ooh, that's a strange idea. But in a high-performing group, what people would say is, hey, Carlos, that's a really strange idea. But you know, Carlos, you're a really smart guy, and if you think that's a good idea, can you explain to me why that idea is going to accomplish our goal? But then, Susan, if you don't like my idea, I can try to convince you in a meeting after a meeting, right? Ah, uh, yes. One of the things we found in high performance groups, everybody in the audience has been to the meeting after the meeting. Tell me, Carlos, what happens at the meeting after the meeting? I have. I have yes. already been. Yes. I mean, sometimes you are not allowed or you, don't are, you are not encouraged to express yourself during a business meeting. Right. And then you try to pull out another meeting just after the meeting you just had. Right. But this is not profitable. And people, right, because look at the time and money that's wasted because in the meeting after the meeting, that's where the real ideas are discussed. That's where the real problems of the company are discussed. But they don't want to say it in front of their boss. What happens in high performing groups is the meeting after the meeting is in the meeting. We worked with a company, a huge multinational national company that was number one in the S&P and their numbers were tumbling fast. The day we started working with them, they were number six. Well, what they did was they called a meeting of their hundred, hundred top performers from around the world and the, the CEO started the meeting by saying, I know what all of you are thinking. You're thinking that I'm not the person to do this job. 
you're thinking that I've lost my passion. He said, I was raised in Canada, and I don't express my emotions well. He said, but don't, don't confuse my inability to express my emotions with the passion I feel. We have to have a conversation here today. We don't have time to change our corporate culture. You have to tell me what's wrong, and we have to fix it. For four hours, they had a conversation about all the problems. People went into breakout groups, tried to solve the problems. As a result of that meeting, they eliminated 356 lines of paperwork that were getting in their way. They started with over 100 global initiatives. They reduced it down to 15. They worked in cross-functional teams, figured out three global contracts, and brought 17 million, um, it was euros, 17 million euros to the bottom line within three months that if they had not had that, that meeting, wouldn't have happened. Susan, we were talking previously about talent. Yes. And talent acquisition mm -hmm. is a very, very hard issue nowadays. Let me ask you this. How is the young generation, the younger generation, coming into the market? Are they a more high performance profile than our generation? Well, I think the younger generation has been raised with very different messages. I mean, my parents raised me, my parents were raised in the depression and they raised me with job security, don't leave your job. That's not how people are raised today. People are raised with, you have unlimited potential. We're gonna give you a good education. Um, at the dinner table, you can disagree with us. And they believed it and they come to work and they have these... At the dinner table. Yeah, at the dinner table, All right. you know, we, they'll read the newspaper and they'll challenge authority and their parents clap, and then they go to work. Challenge authority, they I challenge like that. Challenge authority, uh -huh. then they come to work and they challenge authority and they go, shh, you're not ready yet, you haven't had enough experience. They come to work, they're wearing their iPod, they're text messaging on their phone, they come to their computer, they turn on their Facebook, they have their email, their instant messaging, and what their boss wants to do is turn everything off because the boss thinks they're not paying attention. They're multitasking in technology. The world is multitasking in technology. Instead of looking at how they're different, we need to look at what can we learn from them? What can a company learn from their facility with technology that's gonna help the innovation of the future? By being multi-channel yes. in terms of technology, yes. is this more of a high performance group? Well, I think that most of the innovation that's going to be in the future is going to be using technology to better reach our customers. When a young person looks at a computer, they've never known life without that computer. <laughs> That's right. When I look at a computer, I say, what did I used to do, and how can I do it better, faster, cheaper using my computer? That's digitization or operational excellence in a company. When a young person is looking at a computer, there was never no use to be. So they say, the fun with them is, how can I use technology to do something it's never done before? I have this problem, I want my laptop to help me fix it, and they'll sit there for an hour until they figure it out. That's innovation. Susan, thank you very much for thank your time. You very Unfortunately, much, Carlos. we are running out of time. Well, it was great fun so being here. So I'll have to let you go. Thank and, you. But thank you very much. It was a pleasure welcoming you here. Same here, thank you. E siga o Mestre dessa semana, vai ficando por aqui. Se você gostou dessa entrevista, se você quer fazer um comentário sobre essa entrevista, escreva para a gente, siga o mestre, arroba, idealtv.com.br. Muito obrigado pela sua audiência e até a próxima semana. Esqueci, esqueci! Que simpática, hein? Nossa senhora! Foi, foi. Tchau, gente, tudo de bom. Não, não, tchau não, tem que fazer a chamada. <risos>